Assalamu alaikum, welcome to PFS. Uh, in this short video, I will discuss about the two investment strategies, uh, active investment strategies versus the passive investment strategies. In fact, in the investment management industry, uh, there has been a perennial debate uh, between the active investment and passive investment strategies, which one works well, which one not, and which one is for whom. So, uh, in this short video, I will explain uh, what passive investment is and what active investment is, and uh, there are some uh, differences in terms of characteristics. Feel free to make comments and subscribe the channel. Uh, thank you for uh, watching. In the investment management uh, world, there are uh, two broad types of uh, investment management style. Uh, one is the active investment strategy and the other one is the passive investment strategy. So let's see uh, the definition and the differences between the two uh, types of investment strategies, active versus passive. So passive investment managers uh, manage a portfolio that is designed to imitate the performance of a benchmark. The benchmark can be a broad-based uh, equity market index or a subset of index. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, you are a Bangladeshi investor managing a portfolio that is uh, tracking the DSEX index, or it can be uh, a portfolio that manages uh, to imitate the performance of uh, DS30 index. So DS30 or DSEX can be a benchmark or for example if you manage a Sharia focused fund uh, in that case uh, DSEX can be the uh, benchmark. Whereas uh, active fund managers uh, always try to uh, attempt uh, to add value to the portfolio by seeking investments that are expected to outperform the uh, benchmark. For example if you manage a portfolio where the benchmark is a DS30 and you try to uh, prepare a portfolio, construct a portfolio that is likely to outperform or the strategy is to outperform the DS30 index, then the style of management will be active uh, investment management. Let's see a bit more detail on the passive investment strategy. So the investment management strategy uh, try to, tries to match the return and risk of the benchmark. So you can achieve that investment strategy uh, using full replication strategy, or you can do that by holding a subset of the market. So in case of full replication strategy, investment managers uh, buys all the securities of the index uh, in proportion to their weight that is in the benchmark. So for example, if a certain stock has 5% weight in the benchmark, the portfolio manager also buys the security having 5% weight in the portfolio. However, the full replication strategy, uh, you may underperform a little bit uh, compared to the index because index is a pro paper portfolio which doesn't have any cost. But in case of your portfolio, which is a real portfolio, so whenever you buy and sell, uh, you have transaction costs. So because of the transaction cost, you might underperform a, a little bit. That's why many investment managers uh, try to hold a subset of the market rather than a full replication strategy. So they create a sample portfolio that tries to mimic the performance of the benchmark. So in case of sample portfolio, the objective is to minimize the cost because the full replication strategy are a little bit costly compared to the sample strategy. However, in case of sample strategy, if the sample does not reflect the population, which is the benchmark, then there might be some deviation. That's why uh, there will be some tracking error. So uh, passive investment managers always attempts to minimize the tracking error. The tracking error is the differences between your portfolio's return and the benchmark return. So we calculate it by taking the differences between the benchmark return and portfolio's return and calculating the standard deviation of the deviations between your portfolio return and the benchmark return. Let's see a bit detail on active investment management. So active investment managers aim to identify the opportunities to outperform the benchmark. For example, if your benchmark is a DS30, so you try to outperform the benchmark's return. For example, if DS30 is up by 10%, your portfolio tries to outperform or exceed the return exceed 10%. Whenever the benchmark is down by 10%, you form the portfolio as so that your performance is down by less than 10%. So in order to do that, you have to attempt to select securities 
that will outperform the benchmark. So whenever you find securities that you think will outperform the benchmark, you overweight that asset. And if you find securities that are likely to underperform the benchmark, so you underweight the, those securities. Not only that, active portfolio managers often tries to time the market as well. Since uh, most markets are extremely volatile, especially the equity market, so they try to uh, capture that volatility. So whenever the market prices has gone down, they try to overweight uh, their portfolio and, and they try to have a good amount of their investment in equities. And whenever the market is likely to go down, they try to have less weight in the equity and more on cash so that they can time the market and add value to their portfolio so that their portfolio performance is greater than the benchmark. So let's summarize the differences between the passive management and active management. So in case of passive management, since they are trying to match the index, they require some skill. Uh, the skill is to pick the investment that include in the benchmark with their respective weight. Um, so and in case of active management, managers must have access to better information than the market because having that information edge will help them to make return that is greater than the market and since uh, they try to outperform the market by selecting securities that are undervalued overweighting those securities and underweighting their securities that are likely to underperform the index or those are overvalued so they try to uh, add value to their portfolio so they always try to um, add uh, more return compared to the uh, benchmark the differences we always call alpha so in case of active management, the skill needed is uh, higher and also they try to perform better compared to the passive portfolio manager. That's why the fees in case of active portfolio management is higher compared to the passive portfolio management. In case of active portfolio management, the active portfolio manager tries to overweight uh, the stocks that is sufficiently undervalued to cover the cost of implementing the strategy. And when such stocks are overvalued, they try to underweight or sell the stocks so in that case the transition cost will be very high compared to the passive investment strategy since the trading activities will be higher in case of active portfolio management compared to the passive portfolio management so transaction cost will be higher as well that's all about active versus passive investment strategies if you have any questions feel free to make comments thank you for watching the video